Hey, Numpkins, how's it going? Today we are playing Momoka. This is a RPG maker game that I've been wanting to play for a while, just getting around to it now. Let's try it out, shall we? Warning. Graphic depictions of blood and gore. That was a lovely uh, intro screen, by the way. So, have you guys heard about the rumor? The one about the priest in the church? I heard everyone talking about it during dinner. What was that all about? Seriously, you don't know the full story? Not really. Momoka, do you know it? Nah, uh come on, tell us, tell us. All right, all right. I'll tell ya. I'm sure you've noticed, but Mitsuki Catholic Middle School has its own church that we go to en masse on Sundays, in case you hadn't noticed. But we got no priest. It's an all-girls school, after all. One man alone with all these girls, not good. Hee hee. But once upon a time, the school did have a priest. They say that he was a good guy. Until one day. Oh, I know what. It turns out he was feeling up some of the girls, and even the sisters, right? What a creep. Hey, I thought you didn't know the story. I was trying to spook you both. I only knew because everyone here was talking about it. That's why. I don't know the story. I can still get spooked, Kumi. I guess, but fine. Whatever. So, like Chizuru spoiled, it turned out the old dude couldn't keep his hands to himself. One of the sisters had found out what he was doing and became furious. So furious, in fact, that in the middle of a confession the priest was having with a student, the sister barged in the confessional, booth, gun in hand, shot the priest in the head, and killed him. Oh man. No one really cares about what happened after that, but flash forward till today. They say if you go to the church and sneak into the, uh, the second confessional booth at 3am, then proceed to have a confession like normal will cause the ghost of the priest to answer you. And if you don't confess your greatest sin, then he'll haunt you forever. Boo! Pfft. I'm not gonna lie, that was pretty weak, Kumi. Ha! Not only that, but the whole ghost thing is just super fake, too. Shut it! I told you! Jizura ruined the atmosphere. Could you please keep it down over there? It's late. I'm trying to sleep. Well, how about you get up from that bed and say it to our faces? Kumi, shut up. Sorry, Yakuchi. We'll keep it down. Anyway, yeah. not only was your delivery way off, but ghosts don't exist. If you two are so sure about it, why don't you go th both go down there and see for yourselves? Y you're kidding, right? It's 10pm. No way am I going to step until 3am for the appointed time. Unlike you, I actually care for my image. I need my beauty sleep. Whoa, Shizuru with a sick burn. Hmm, I don't know. Sounded like a bunch of cowards to me. Okay then. Why don't we all go? I'm more inclined to do this if we're all in this together. <laughs> no way I'm going. I know I'm the one who suggested it, but you guys are the ones who don't believe in ghosts. And since I know they do exist, it's only fair that you and Shizuru have to go. Alright, keep your voice down. I'm willing to go if you are, Momoka. Alright, fine. We'll just prove to Kumi that ghosts don't exist. It's not just the ghosts I'm worried about, though. They probably keep the church locked during the night. You guys probably have to find a way to sneak inside. I saw that in the sister's room there's a ring of keys. You mean the sister's office? You want us to sneak in there and steal them? Unless you plan on shape-shifting through the church doors, I don't see any other way. It'll be no problem, Momoka. I may be an amateur when it comes to mischief, but... Well, first time for everything. All right. Let's do it. They seem to be agreeing to this whole situation way too easily. Way too easily. Alright, it's 2am. You guys know what you're doing, right? Yeah, I'll knock on the sister's office door and run away, ding dong ditch style. And when Chizuru makes more noise down the hall, sister Kazuko will come out and investigate. That's when I'll sneak in and get the keys. Pretty solid plan, right? It's good enough, I guess. Don't get caught out there. Good luck. Not very encouraging, but okay. Alright, let's get the fuck out of here. Being out in the halls at 2am is pretty eerie. 
It sure is. And do you hear that rain? Maybe we should have thought a little more about this. Maybe this is a really dumb idea. Oh no, I didn't even think about the rain. But if we go back now, Kumi will think we're a bunch of cowards. A little rain never hurt anyone. Come on, we can do this. The sister's office is the door at the back in the main entrance. Okay. All right. Come on, Momoka, I believe in you. Can we save in this? We can. I'm guessing this must be it then. Do we look around first? Should we look around? Momoka is very nice, even though she's an idiot. She doesn't want to disturb the other girls. She just wants to disturb the, ner the, the nun. Yeah, Sister Sukazuko is still inside. It looks like she's sleeping on her desk. Really? Then I feel kind of bad for waking her up like this then. Alright! I'm gonna do it. Mind hiding someplace else, Momoka? Of course. Give me a moment. That is a terrible hiding spot. Come on, Chizuru. I know you got this. Okay. One. Two. Sister Kazuko is a fucking idiot. Okay, now's my chance. Let's go. Let's go. Keys, keys, keys. I'm looking for keys. There they are, right on top of the desk. Gotcha. Alright, let's get out of here. Is Shizuru okay? Did she get caught? Oh! You got the keys right. Come on, let's get moving. Okay. No way. Already? What? Hang on. I'd like to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporter, Aurobarus. Thank you for the continued support, and I hope you feel better soon. I know I said you were feeling a bit sick in Twitch chat. I hope you feel super numb. Anything to add to that, Chrism? You're super numb. Anything else? You're big numb key? Anything else? Francis thinks you're 7 out of 10? So no! So no! Thank you. Do you guys want to customize shout out? Other cool stuff? Check out our Patreon by the link below and be numb, just like a robberus. And we hope you enjoy this video. It's really fucked up. That sounds like a rather ominous thing for her to have said. It's freezing out here and the rain certainly isn't helping. If we stay under the covered walkways, we should be relatively dry. What got you running out like that anyway? Were you almost caught? I realized that once I got into the hallway, Sister Kazuka was going to see me in plain sight. I panicked and hid inside a cabinet outside. When Sister Kazuka came in, she knocked on some of the dorms. When the girls let her in, I bolted out of there. She must have thought it was one of the girls there. Really? This whole thing is causing more trouble than I anticipated. Tell me about it. Alright, we're here at the church. Hand me the keys. Here you go. No way. What is it? Don't tell me the keys don't work. The door's unlocked? Did they just forget? All of that for nothing. That's just annoying. Let's get inside. This is all very suspicious. Suspiciously suspicious. This ch- what the fuck is up with this church? There's like, fuck all in it. Like, Catholic churches have like, much more, or like, ornamentation than this. As a fine upstanding Catholic girl, I know this. Alright, we're here, and it's only 2.20am. We really underestimated how long this would take, huh? Ha, huh, it's not so bad, we could use this as bonding time. Yeah, totally! And you know what Kumi ended up doing? She squirted that mustard straight into her eye. Yowch, that sounds really painful. Yeah, but she was laughing and crying at the same time. It was so funny. The long winter evenings must just fly by at Catholic school. You and Kumi sound like you've been friends for a long time. I'm glad I met you both here. Me too, Momoka. We're about to make our own funny story too. Look, it's 2.56am. we got to get in there quick. Should we both go in or... Don't worry, I got this. Just keep an eye on the clock. Okay, I'll call out when it's 3am. Chizuru is so nice. What a sweetheart. She's so fucking dead. She's so- they're both dead. They're both gonna die. It's 3am. Start now, Chizuru. Okay. Did you start yet? Yeah, I can't hear you. Well, I guess that's the point. They must have soundproofed the booth so people outside wouldn't hear. Well, it's 3.02am now. You can come out now. Have you seen anything? She's so fucking dead. Either that or she's gonna play a prank. Shizuru. 
Come on, how can you not? Huh? Ch Ch Chisere? Oh, fuck me. Get in the door. <laughs> Chisere, are you alright? Why'd you scream like that? It's pitch black in here, I can't see a thing. Hey, come on, this isn't funny. Say something already. I swear if... Boo! Yeah, it was a prank. Haha, <laughs> did I get you? No. I totally did, though. You should have seen the look on your face. You jerk. You say that, but you got a half smile on you. Jerk. Since you did that, okay. Since when did you become Kumi all of a sudden? I think you rubbed off her personality a bit. Hey, at least I can actually scare someone, right? Anyway, let's get out of here. I didn't say anything, and I totally didn't confess my gravest sin. So it really was a rumor? Now we can shove it in Kumi's face. Let's go. Okay, so nothing actually happened. Huh, is that another girl walking this way? Yeah, it is. Oh, don't tell me you guys just came back from the church. We did. Were you going to see if the rumor was true too? Yeah, did you guys see him? Was he all creepy and all that? Why don't you see for yourself? Here, take the church keys. Just remember to lock the door when you're done. Oh man, thanks. That must mean he's really real. Seems like we're not the only ones interested in it. I guess it really is a popular rumor, but it's after 3am. It won't work, right? <clears throat> or is it any time after 3am before door? I don't know. How was it? Did you guys shit your pants or what? Don't be gross. The whole thing was a waste of time. There's no ghost. Waste of time, you say? Pfft. I knew there was no ghost. I just wanted you guys to look stupid. That's what you get for ruining my story. You realise that you had to stay up just as long as... Le you realise that you had to stay up just as long as us. And that Chizuru and I were interested anyway? I say that you wasted your own time. Y yeah, but... Fuck. Anyway, I'm dead tired. I need to get to bed. Good night, everyone. Yeah, we have to get up in four hours. How lame. Oh, fuck. And then Momoka got super worried. Pfft, no way! And then what? Huh? What? For telling Kimmy about the scare you gave me? Wow, that sure woke you up. And then I yelled out boo, and that really freaked her out. I'm telling you, you should have been there. <laughs> nice. Hey, you're not so bad yourself, Jizuru. Maybe you should drop your pop idol dreams and be a story time teller. Hmm, I'll consider it. Someone's at the door? Oh, hi. Good morning, girls. Last night, apparently two girls who snuck out around 2, 3 a.m. We're going door by door to see who done it. If any of you girls did it or know who did, please let me know. If you turn yourselves in, your punishment will be greatly reduced. Pfft, you're accusing us of mischief or what? No, but if any of you are lying, God always reveals the truth. Well, none of us did it, so you can go and check the other girls. See you at breakfast, Sister Takakai. Very well then. I know who did it. Ah, thank you, Yukuchi. What do you know? It was Harimoto and Kirahara. They both left last night to sneak into the church. Is this true? No, it isn't. It was just me. I went to the church by myself. Jizuru didn't go. Momoka? Yakuchi. Sorry, it was just Harimoto who went. What a bitch, Arisa. Thank you, Yakuchi. Harimoto, please come with me. Yes, sister. What a bitch. What the fuck is your problem? Why would you go and snitch him out like that? Damn it, it's whatever. The punishment for sneaking past curfew is exiled from everyone for two days, right? It won't be so bad, I guess, but still. Thank you, Momoka. I'll have to thank her for taking one for the team next time. She's gonna die. She's gonna get killed. Momoka followed Sister Takako out the room and into the hallway. Some of the girls had already gotten out their dorm rooms and were hanging around the hallways waiting to be called for breakfast. As Momoka continued following the footsteps of the sister, she could feel every pair of eyes locked onto her. Momoka became very self-conscious. Finally, they arrived at the sister's office. This is where Momoka was going to be staying for the next two days in punishment. Sister Takako opens the door and walks inside. Momoko follows suit, but when the sister closed the door behind her... <laughs> what? Something sharp pinched Momoka's neck. Whatever it was, it was lodged deep inside her. Another sister was hiding behind the door and stabbed Momoka in the neck with a needle, injecting whatever fluid that was inside straight into her bloodstream. Jesus fucking Christ! The pain was too much for Momoka. 
She yelped and tumbled to the floor, clenching her neck and trying to understand what was happening to her. Any neck movement she made, Momoka's neck would ache in pain. She tried to keep her head up straight, but it felt like her cranium was getting heavier each passing moment. Momoka finally hung her head and her body slumped onto the floor. She was now unconscious. This is fucking fucked. What the fuck? This is not good, Momoka. I think you're fucked. This is what you had for being nice. What is this? Why can't I see? Who's there? Momoka orders her arms to remove the blindfold on her eyes, but they are restricted by rope that is digging into her wrists. She tries to move the rest of her body, but it's all prohibited. Momoka is strapped down to a table. That's shuffling. Someone is here with me. <coughs> Two cold hands place themselves onto each of Momoka's thighs, grasping her fat tightly. Jesus. There are two people, each on opposite sides of the table. What's going on? Why am I like this? Untie me! Oh! What? Suddenly, Momoka feels a row of cold metal teeth on both her thighs. The sensation sends shivers through her body. Every single hair is standing straight up. Stop! Please! The two rows of hundreds of tiny steel blades begin pressing down into Momoka's thighs, moving back and forth simultaneously. What the fuck? <laughs> The blades vigorously tear through her skin and break through her fat. The deeper the sores go, the more animalistic Momoka's screams become. Momoka can feel the blood spraying from her legs. Holy shit! What the fuck? It hurts. It hurts. The blade suddenly struck something smooth and hard. Momoka's leg bone. The people remove the blades as if removing a knife from a cake to cut another slice. Momoka thanks God in heaven that they seem to have stopped. But her injuries send waves of unbearable agony straight to her brain to remind her that she may be moments away from death. With all the blood spurting from her wounds, it feels as though she's urinating from the legs. Jesus Christ, this description! Her blood drips down her legs and into her once clean socks, tainting them crimson. It hurts. It hurts so much. God, it hurts. Yeah. Stop. No more, please. I'm begging you. Oh, oh she's fucked. She's done so. The loud noise of a high-speed rotary machine echoes in the cramped room, reducing Momoka's hearing into nothing more than a constant high-pitched ringing. Momoka can't even hear the sounds of her own pain-induced screaming as the rotary blade fits itself into the open wound, continuing where the last set of tools previously left off. The machine cuts through her bone and instantly minces the flesh that was still there below it, successfully separating her leg from the thigh. The final slice sends Momoka into shock, causing her to lose consciousness once again. This is really fucked. What the fuck? When Moika finally comes to, she finds herself slumped in a metal chair. Her hands are tied behind her back and she can't seem to escape. I mean, she has so many legs. Hi. The first thing Momoka notices about herself is her absence of legs. She tries sending signals down her spine with her brain to move her limb, but the signals end abruptly at her thigh. It's a foreign and phantom feeling that Momoka can't wrap her head around. Lifting her thigh with her core, she sees sutures at the end of the stump. The stitches are keeping the skin together, almost resembling packaged sausages. <laughs> What, what happened to me? Sour vomit rises up Momoka's throat. She begins to feel lightheaded. The uncomfortable feeling of not having her legs anymore combined with why this has happened to her was getting to her. Momoka moves her head around to get an idea of where she is. Stone everywhere. A basement, maybe? I can feel the wall with my hands here and... The restraints are pretty weak, actually. Let me try this. Come on, zing it! Yeah. Momoka breaks free from her restraints and face plants into a puddle of something sticky and vicious. It's jam. The right side of her face is coated with jam. Gross, what is this? Momoka sits up and stares at the two stumps once again, trying to build up her mental fortitude to keep going and find an escape. Testing her strength, Momoka plants her hands on the floor, drags herself a few feet. It's tiring, but Momoka needs to endure if she wants to escape from the room. Why? Why did this have to happen to me? My legs! This is really fucked, by the way. Like, crazy fucked. Oh my god, look at us! Skeletal remains are sprawled out across the floor. The bleach white colour of the bones complement the colour of the stone floor. An actual dead body? God, what the hell is going on? I don't want to die like this. Please god, I don't want to die! The large steel door rattles in place when tried. It can't be opened without a key. 
There's something sparkling up there. I can't reach it from here, though. I need a height boost. Do we grab a bone, maybe? Push the chair. Let's push the chair. And then we do it there. There's something up here, but I can't reach my hand far enough for it. I'll have to wriggle it out with something. Okay, now we get the bone. Mocha picks up a long bone from the skeleton. Please forgive me. Alright, here we go. I'll use the bone I just got. Come on. That was the sound of the bone breaking. But this came out too, it's a key. Momoka obtained a steel key. I like the way she sort of hops. The last steel door rattles in place when tried. It can't be opened without a key. I have a key, but I can't reach the keyhole. Oh, for fuck's sake, Momoka. Listen, I understand you're in a shit situation, but think. There we go. This has to be a basement of some sort. And it's so cold down here too, my thighs have gone numb from dragging them across the floor. No way, it's a wheelchair! An old beat up wheelchair that looks like it's moments away from falling apart. It's parked against the wall in the hallway. The wheels have been thoroughly rusted. Momoka tests its durability by jumping on it a few times and shaking it. Turning the wheels causes some rust to fall off from the gears. It's a little wobbly, but it's definitely way better than dragging my body across the floor everywhere. Damn right. Oh my god, she's Speedy Gonzalez now! Alright, these are all locked. Call the jam. This is a jam, like, fucking party here. You've got to be kidding me. Stairs? Once I've explored this floor thoroughly, I'll see about climbing these. This place is not disabled access friendly. Huh? What's up with this room? It's completely empty. The ground! What's going on? Suddenly, the wheels of Moika's chair began to buckle. Thinking the chair was in the middle of falling apart, she looks to the side. Instead, Momoka sees the multiple red and slimy worms have sprouted from the ground and were entangling themselves in her wheels. What? The floorboards become soft and malleable, and Momoka slowly sinks into the ground. Momoka was so distracted by the tentacles, she didn't notice the room itself change. Momoka looks up to see the entire room is transformed into some hellish chamber. The floor, walls, and ceiling were made up of what looks to be raw meat stretched across each plane. Ah! Before her mind could even process what was going on, a thick mass covers the end of Momoka's thighs. Whatever it was, it felt like slimy pig fat, and it was undoing her sutures. Oh my god. Momoka screamed in pain, but she wasn't restricted like last. She dove off her chair and fell onto the floor. The floor rippled from Momoka's impact and continued to ruffle as she scrambled herself to the door. Momoka reached the door, but without the chair's height boost, she was unable to reach the knob. She turned around to shrink back against the door. Huh? It's open! The door must have been broken because when Momoka leaned on it, it swung open, causing her to spill out into the hallway. Well, that was a nightmare fuel. What's wrong with that room? My stitches, God no! Momoka looks down to see her sutures have been ripped out and that her two wounds were now reopened. She is losing blood. This can't be! The stairs! Maybe I can find a first aid kit upstairs! Oh my god. We are so fucked. I want a trail of blood, Momoka. I want a trail of blood. Why isn't there a trail of- oh, sorry, a trail of jam. That's what we want. Jam. Jam. Give us jam. In the comments, give us jam. There's no way to climb up these stairs, but I have to. Momoka figures the easiest way for her to climb the stairs is do it one at a time. She sits on the first step, then uses all her strength to sit on the next. The strength she's forcing out causes her thighs to throb out in blood. Momoka watches herself leave a trail of blood up the stairs, moaning and groaning in pain each passing moment. Momoka wants to puke, and she does. She spills gastric juices out her mouth, staining her shirt, and the steps in warm This is like some fucking torture porn shit. She feels lightheaded, but she soldiers on. At this point, Momoka doesn't even want to be saved. She only hoped that the next person she sees will do her the favour of ending her life, putting a stop to all this pointless torment. I've made it to the top. Momoka's voice comes out hoarse, her throat still stinging from when she threw up. She crawls a few feet away from the stairs and goes limp. Just how much blood did she lose, Momoka wonders. She thinks if it was even worth it to struggle out the first room in the first place. Momoka remembers when her mum told her that she would go to Mitsuki Catholic Middle School for girls. She was annoyed at first, but ultimately went with it to please her parents. This is how it's going to turn out, Momoka would have thrown a tantrum. She wouldn't have cared if it made her look like a spoiled brat. 
Anything was better than this, she thinks. Someone is coming? Huh? Yeah. What is going on? Uh, I'll kill. What? What is this? Moko was flabbergasted. She couldn't believe that lying on the ground with no legs and bleeding out very badly was a girl who looked exactly like her. What? Not even looked like her. This was her, Momoka thought. The Momoka clone had her uniform stained with red and yellow juices and her eyes were dull. She didn't even have a lot of time left in her. Please kill. Uh, what's going on? Momoka had already seen grotesque imagery since coming down to the basement, but this was a sight of the clone that seemed to have really gotten to her. Momoka put her hands on her and moaned. But the clone on the ground was trying to tell her something. Momoka didn't even want to listen to her. Kill me, please. I'm begging you, kill me. Kill? A clone resembled a wounded animal. It was whimpering, it was moaning, and it was very much in pain. It was clearly a human. Was it okay to end its life? But the more it writhed in pain, the more Momoka couldn't stand it. The uncanny resemblance to her own self was eating at her brain, and felt like she could feel its pain too. Momoka wrapped her arms around the being's throat. What the- Why are we strangling it? Momoka could feel the neck of the clone strain, and watch as its eyes rolled into the back of its head. Its face was turning purple and drool was dripping from the corners of its mouth. Well, this is lovely. The clone's body continued to contort and its jaw went slack. Finally, after five minutes of torture, it moved no more. It went limp, like a rag doll. Momoka's stomach bubbled and then spurted gastric juices up her esophagus where it erupted out of her mouth. She has never felt so sick in her life. Uh, hey, look, it's Momoka. No kidding. We've been worried sick of... What the fuck? Momoka, what happened? <coughs> Are you okay, Momoka? Everything's fine. We're all here now. I had... I had to. Uh, Jesus Christ. It's okay. It's okay. What is happening? Come on, we gotta leave. We have to tell everyone what's going on down here and leave this fucking place. But how? The nearest town isn't miles away. We have to walk through the forest with no map. If that's how it is, then we can try calling for help and keep it low until the police arrive. The school gets mail and food every other st and stuff from trucks every once in a while, right? We can call for help with a radio or a phone that they have somewhere in this place. And I don't think Momoka wants to stay here any longer, so let's go. Okay, are you ready to leave, Momoka? Yeah, just give me a minute. I just finished strangling my clone. Actually, why are you guys down here? Well, after the whole waste ordeal and you left, one of the sisters came by the room. She was acting super strange and asking where you went, and after we said you didn't know, she bolted off. Kimi and I looked at each other and knew something was up. We figured you went to the basement to find answers. And the things they're doing down here, what the fuck? They've got some rooms dedicated to torturing girls. Yeah, I saw. And this clone thing, don't tell me that was actually true. Come on, let's go. What is happening? I don't understand anything that just happened. I don't want to go in this room again. Oh, wait. Hang on. Let's get the fuck out of here then. Hang on, I'm back where I was now, fuck! I'm sorry, Clone Momoka. Rest in pepperoni. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Okay, so there's a gap we need to get across somehow. No way! This wasn't here when we got down here, they trapped us. Let's try and find another way out. There's a note lying on the ground. The lettering is sloppy and all over the place, but it's still readable. I guess they've been an alcoholic is good. Well, I guess that being an alcoholic has been good for one thing. To be honest, I don't know what the fuck is going on. I'm the only one who doesn't. All the sisters do, not me. I thought being a sister would help me, but I found myself in some unspeakable mess. I'm jotting all this down for my sake, really. But if someone does end up reading this, don't think I'm crazy. There's an alien down here. Okay, I don't know that it's really an alien, but it's not from this world. Or at least it hasn't been discovered. What? It stops here. Maybe we should be glad it stops there. Did you read the right? An alien? What does that even mean? What the fuck is happening? This is mental. Oh. The floor opened up. Feels like someone's screwing with us. Well, we're probably gonna die. I hope it's another torture room. I've had enough of this place already. I could say that again. I hope this is not another torture room. Footsteps, someone's coming. Hurry, let's get inside quick. I saw the newborn. The girls have killed it. They're heading into room 2C. Bring everyone out here. If they escape and tell everyone, we'll have to go through with our fallout plan. What? Oh god, no! Forget about the girls, it's escaped its room! You guys carry out the plan, I'll take care of the girls down here! 
Sister Etsuko readies the magnum in her hand. She says a prayer in her head. This is mental. Sister Kaiko's note. There is a note lying on the ground. We put this. Okay, I'll start from the top. Please believe when I say this, but what they're doing at the school is this. The sisters spread the rumor about a priest at the church and yada yada, basically getting the girls to leave the dorm rooms at night. They made it up so they could punish the ones who go outside. And while they say in the rules that the punishment is mere exile from everyone for two days, what they do is much, much worse. The sisters drug the girl and take them to one of the basement rooms and cut off their legs from the thigh down. They tie the ends of their thighs and let them dry out for two days before being put into the priest room. Now I know what you're thinking. The priest room. I thought you said that was just a rumor. Well, sorta. The thing is, Mutsukuthi Catholic Middle School didn't used to have a priest. It does have a priest. And he's still around, you see. I had to dig up some information about this, but I think I know the full story. Masuki Catholic Middle did have a priest, and as far as I know, he was a very nice man. In fact, nothing on the records ever say that he touched up the staff. If something so gross had happened, it surely would have made the news, right? But I couldn't find anything. It must be added, an added detail the girls themselves put in as it got passed around. Now, I know that sounds relatively normal, albeit a bit strange so far, but I think I might lose some of you on this next point. If the priest never got shot by the sister, then what did happen to him? I'll tell you what, he's turned into some monster. A literal one. Some alien crawled into his ear and changed him completely. He's not what he used to be. What is this? But this alien, it's addicted. <laughs> oh my god. It's going all over the place, but hear me out. This thing landed on Earth. It's from an advanced species that humans can't even comprehend. The reason why this school is able to provide so much food is because the alien is able to use the discarded legs of girls and turn it into some kind of mega fertilizer. So if this thing is super smart, then it's on Earth for one thing, to replace the human race with its own intelligent beings, either alien hybrids or what, this thing is meant to destroy. But like I said before, it's addicted to sex. The son of a bitch isn't so smart after all. What the hell is it talking about? Look at the bitch Oh, Japan. The deeper we go into this basement, the more fucked up shit we find. I bet we're the only sane ones left. But could it really be true? The stuff the sister is talking about, we've seen it down here. The removing leg thing. How the school is able to grow its own food. And what's up with that sex part? I don't tell me whatever this thing is doing. God, I don't want to get it. I'm sick of it. I want to go home, away from this terrible, terrible place. Come on, let's leave. I want to get out of here too. Oh my god. Okay, is this some kind of puzzle here? Like, we're in a dead end. Like, so we're fucked, right? Do you think the person from outside is gone yet? Yeah, I'd hope so. Okay. This wasn't open before, right? How oh, the daughter's room was locked before. Do you think these footsteps from earlier came through here? Could be, though if we went through here, wouldn't we have seen them by now? Maybe we managed to slip past them and they went to the bottom floor. Let's be on guard just in case. One of the bricks is jutting out. Press it, yes. No one can press it in, has a large click. Nothing in this room seems to have changed. Alright, let's go back to the other one quickly. Oh, an axe! Hand this to me, I think I should be the one carrying it around. Yeah, you got two us one of all of us. You're probably the one who can do the most damage. After taking the axe to the wall, familiar click is heard again. Okay, so we have an axe, which we probably couldn't have had before, right? We could have, that might not have, like... That might be optional if I'd just gone into this room over here. Huh. I don't think there's anything in these ones. Otherwise we would have heard something. We'd have seen something, right? So let's just keep going. What is going on? Suddenly the wall opens and reveals a small closet within the wall. Give me a break, we're in some kind of fucked up adventure movie or what? Let's take a look. It's really cramped in here, not to mention dusty. And we have Sister Kaiko's note. The thing isn't all that different from humans after all. I don't know what this thing's first victim, but he turned the school into some kind of fucked up alien little girl sex ring. Are you fucking kidding me? It's got all the sisters under some kind of alien influence, doing whatever it asks of them with no question. I think I'm not affected when I'm drunk, so I've been making sure to conserve all the alcohol I have. 
This monster commands the other girls to remove the, the other sisters to remove the girls' little cap. This monster commands the other sisters to remove the legs of these captured girls and tie them to chairs, so it's easier for it to have sex with them. But the most fucked up part about it is that they sterilize the girls beforehand. They take water hoses and put the heat up until it's blistering, and then they just... God, why? It's fucking horrible. This is unbelievable. They do this so the girls don't get impregnated by whatever the alien is, and they swap out girls each semester. But obviously a plan like this has flaws. How are they able to do this without raising suspicion? Well, the monster thought of a plan for that too. When they dry the girls out after removing their legs, they collect cups of their blood. They then do this weird ritual that involves them drinking the blood with the sister's own menstrual blood. Of course it is. The aliens then swallow this solution and have sex with the sisters and almost instantly the sister looks like they're nine months pregnant. They give birth to exact replicas of the victims and they're all unconscious. They cut out the umbilical cords and somehow implant fake memories in them. That means, by the way, that I'm the clone. The, what, the Momoka we killed in the corridor was the real Momoka and we are the Momoka clone. Once they bring this full-size clone back to the office, they inject it with drugs to wake it up and then send it back to its dorm room. What? This can't possibly be true. The note mentions the monster creates an exact replica. Does that mean I'm... I feel sick. What's going on? I don't understand any of it. Momoka, come on. I mean, clones? It's... You're, you're real, right? The truth is that Momoka doesn't even know anymore. Whether she was really a clone or not was bothering her. She thinks back to the Momoka clone that she put out of its misery. There was no denying it. Momoka killed her killing herself. It wasn't an it at all. It was the original Momoka. The real one. The one whose reality only mattered. The existential thought put the clone's mind on the brink of madness. If it hadn't been for the two acquaintances by its side, it would have started to smash its head against the wall. This so smashing its head against the wall would prove anything. It would hope that pain, the blood, and the fractured skull fragments would confirm, in fact, that it was real. Momoka! Hey, are you listening to me? Look at me! It doesn't... If you're a... What matters is that you want to survive, right? To escape. So let's focus on that, okay? And after that, then what? What could happen after the whole ordeal was over? Move on? Tell her parents? After all, these people she would go back to wouldn't be her parents. Her new parents were now an alien and some sister she'd never met before. Would she be able to keep a straight face saying, I love you, mum and dad, to her supposed parents? There would be no biological connection between them. Was there a point in living after all this, the clone thought? Say something, please, Momoka. Let's just go. There was no point in having doubts now. It figured it would sort everything out once this was over. This is so fucked. This is unbelievably fucked. For fuck's sake, Sister Etsuko, whatever your name is. According to the note, the elevator up here leads to the attic. That sister though, Kaiko was it? Is it even worth talking to her? She seems a bit of a loony. She might be a crazy drunk, but she's the only person we can trust. She has the same goal as us, right? Putting a stop to all this and being able to leave home. Let's go then. Momoka pressed the button on the side of the door to call the elevator down. Great. Finally, I found you girls! What? She's got a gun on her! If I rush her with the axe, I'll be shot dead before I could even reach her. Sister Exico, why do you have a gun? Just, what's happening? Just tell us the truth. Please, just make this easy for me. Come here, girls. Set the gun down and walk over to us. We have no reason to trust you with that thing in your hand. You don't understand. Why? Why did you girls have to look into all this? You caused this! Sister Etsuko frantically waves the gun around and finally points it towards the girls. Just walk over here! I'm the one with the gun! Don't, don't make me shoot you like this! She's gonna kill us no matter what. Momoka, the elevator is open. Get inside, quick. No way, what about you? She'll gun us down the moment we move. It's okay. I'm a sweet talker, unlike you. Shizuru's dead. What are you saying, Shizuru? Tell us when, Shizuru. Momoka. Thank you. Think about what you're doing, Sister Etsuko. Shut up! That's... I'm trying not to think what I'm doing. I'm... I'm protecting you! Do you think we all like this? Momoka, Kumi, go now! Kumi, let's go now! God damn it, god damn it, damn it! Hey! Well... Damn it, please don't tell me you just left her to die like that! Answer me, quit the fucking silent treatment, it doesn't make you look badass or anything! I don't want any of this, I just want it to stop! I'm sorry, Kumi. What the fuck is wrong with me? I should have should apologize. Jazuru, god damn it, I'll make them pay. What's going on at the school? We're gonna put a stop to it, okay? When the elevator reaches its destination at the top, the mocha presses the emergency stop button. Who's there? Oh, it's just it's the drunk girl, yeah. Hey, we mean you no harm. 
I'm Kumi and this is Momoka. That's my axe. How did you get that? We found it. Are you by chance the author of the notes scattered around here? My notes. Oh no, have you come to execute me then? No, we're on your side. We want to escape from this place and we need your help. No way. Same people and you want to escape? Me too, me too. You have no idea how tough it's been living by myself. What do you say, partners? Should we plan our exit? Cut the crap already. We don't got time for this shit. The sisters, they just killed our friend. What? They killed her? Yeah, killed her in cold blood and she said she was protecting us. What a crock. Oh man, that's bad. But also good. There was a perfect chance to kill this monster. We're not killing no monster. We just want to escape and be done with the whole thing. And leave it alive. You do know what they're killing- You do know why they're killing the girls, right? Because the monster is panicking. You're a victim, aren't you, Momoka? You've escaped and now you're planning to tell everyone about it. You do that, this whole situation will go down. But if it's panicking this hard, then it could be bad. Real bad. It's ordering the sisters to kill the girls because it's going to do what it was supposed to do. Mate and have offspring. It's going to multiply real fast and by the time we set foot outside this school, the whole world would be gone. Except for those monsters. That's why we got to kill it. Okay, we get it. How do we do it then? How do we kill it? I have one theory, but I'm not sure it will even work. First, we've got to knock it out of its vessel. Its vessel? Yeah, who knows how long it's been inside the priest's body. And without a vessel to manipulate, it wouldn't be able to do all the shape-shifting. The shape of that thing is weird. When it's sleeping or unconscious, it takes the shape of the room it's in, like a liquid. When it's unconscious, it reverts to the original form of the vessel. That's when we'll make our move. If this thing is on high alert, then how are we going to put it to sleep? Well, I stockpiled on needles the sisters used to drug the girls. If it's in a human form, then one injection should do. After that, we smash the head open so we can force the alien out. We have to make sure that we're covering our orifices when we do so. And then what? After it's done with- when- after it's done with out of its shell, what do we do? Well, to be honest, I don't know. That's all I could gather from observing it. What happens after that is new territory. My guess, just gun it down in whatever form it's in after that. Gun it down with what? This axe? No. With this. Sister Kaiko withdraws a large shotgun from the hole in the wall. The weapon looks heavy in the sister's hands. I guess we've got to come up with a plan, huh? I think I'm the fastest one, so I'll stab the thing with the drugs. Momoka, you hold the shotgun until I'm done with it. I feel confident with the axe, so I'll charge in charge of getting the alien out of its head. What do I do then? Back up in case anything goes wrong. If any of us falls, you pick up the weapons and fight like hell, okay? Got it. This is a really bad idea. Before the girls could carry out their plan, they had to prep to make sure that none of them would succumb to the monster's control. Sister Kaiko let Mama and Kumi have a shot of- Momoka and Kumi, not Mama, have a shot of vodka. The liquor burned its way down Momoka's throat and felt it ball up into a pit of fire inside her stomach. She wanted to throw it back out, but there was no time for that. Momoka and Kumi were now tipsy, but they fought their hardest to stay focused. The three of them went inside the elevator and cooled it down. When it reached the bottom, Momoka and Kumi were met with an unpleasant sight. Yakuchi, what happened here? Oh my god, Shizuru! Haramoto, Adagiri, Kihara... I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What happened? After you guys all left, the sisters began going into every dorm and killing every girl. I hid to the basement since that's where you guys said you were going. When I did, I heard a gunshot. I went into this room and saw Kihara on the floor. She was shot in the head. Sister Etsuko was in shock. I made a noise and she turned around and looked at me. I was scared, but she handed me the gun and asked me to kill her. So I... I'm so sorry, Haramoto. None of this would have happened if I hadn't told on you. This is all my fault. Everyone's dying all because of me. I failed God, so please make me atone for my sins. You have to kill me too. What are you saying? There was no way you could have known this would have happened. Sure, it's your fault, but asking us to kill you for it? That's just insane. We're going to fix this. If you truly want to pay for your sins, then let's try to get out of life. You know what you could do, Yukichi? Go back to the sisters' office and radio for help. We'll take care of everything down here, okay? The sisters, they're not your friends anymore. Take that sister's gun and use it to protect yourself. Go, now. Okay. She's a mean shot by the looks of things. Kumi, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Let's get moving. The priest is on the bottom floor. Let's get moving. We have to see other sisters. We kill them. You got that? Go it. Go it. Got it. Go, go, get. Is this the place? The priest room is all the way down. Why don't you girls take another shot of vodka to be safe? This is like an exploitation movie. This is fucking mental. Really mental shit. The girls decided that Sister Kaiko should lead first, with Kimi following closely behind with the axe. Momoka would be behind them both, watching from the sidelines. When they enter the room, they see it's completely empty. It's not here? Are you sure it's not someplace else? That could be the case, but why would they let it out? It hasn't done that in all the time I've been here. 
With nothing happening in the room, Momoka begins to feel lightheaded. She was hoping the adrenaline would keep her straight, but the vodka was really settling in now. Suddenly the door behind them shuts closed, the walls begin to seep blood from every corner, and bulging arteries and veins form on the floor. That son of a bitch, someone let it out and now it's got us trapped in here. Where is it then? It's the entire room now. We've got nowhere to drug it when it's at this size. What? The stench of raw meat and fat quickly filled the room with no ventilation. The air was almost staggering. The feet of the girls squished into the floor like they'd plopped their feet into mud, but it was all gore and awful. Suddenly, bulging tentacles took hold of Kumi and Sister Keiko's ankles and swept their feet. They were suspended upside down in the air while Ramoka remained grounded. Let me go! Let go of me! The suspended girls dropped their weapons and they plopped into the ground where they were slowly swallowed by the hungry floor. More tentacles emerged from the walls and ceiling alike, and they mouthed the limbs of Kumi and Sister Kaiko. Momoka couldn't do anything but squat down and panic. Momoka, look! There's pods everywhere! You have to destroy them! Huh? Pods around the room sprouted from below and were throbbing in the disgusting maroon. Momoka could see webs of veins orchestrating the tentacles from the pods. Got it! What's this? Just as Momoka was going to make her move, a large mass of meat coated in fatty oils and blood appeared right before her. Momoka, run! Destroy the pods! Alright, so this is the boss fight. Oh, we died. A tentacle protruded out the monster's body and entered Momoka's ear. Momoka could no longer hear anyone out of the one ear. Single moment, the tentacle ingested all of Momoka's earwax and burst into her eardrum. It probed itself into Momoka's head until it reached her brain. Momoka was instantly driven mad as the alien squeezed itself between the spaces of her brain. On the outside, Momoka's mouth was foaming and her body was spasming. Her bowels were emptied and the monster ingested that too. <laughs> Momoka's body was entirely skewed by whatever this was. Momoka thinks to herself about why she can't feel any of this, but even her ability to think has been greatly reduced. She can't quite explain it, but she certainly feels every second of this. Momoka's consciousness was pushed back to the smallest part of her brain to accommodate this foreign intruder. The early Momoka now have connected conscious, but Momoka can't understand any of it. Its thoughts are high-pitched and distorted, as if its voice was put in a blender. This would be Momoka's life until the alien was to die, and that would not happen soon, as game over. Oh my god. Oh my god, this game! Oh my god, this is awful. Alright, I've got, I got, I got three needles. Okay. Okay, we got it three times. With the third needle put in the alien's body, the structure of the room begins to wobble. It's working, we're putting it to sleep. After a moment, the meat on the walls and ceiling began to peel back, making disgusting sounds as it retracts back to the alien's body. Kumi and Sister Kaiko are released and fall onto the floor, making a heavy thud. The floor is back to being wood. The weapons that were previously swallowed also dropped from the ceiling. As soon as everything was back to normal, all that remained was the three girls and the body of a middle-aged man. He was on the ground. Kumi immediately picked up the axe and rushed over to the man's body. You bastard! She raised the heavy weapon over her shoulder and swung down with all her might. The man's head caved in and contorted when the blade connected with it. It almost seemed as if the injury woke him up as his body began to spasm. What the? Watch out. This means it's about to come out. Kumi keeps smashing the head. But Kumi wasn't even listening to the sister anymore. She was in her own world doing what she wanted to do. With each swing, Kumi screamed angrier and angrier. A primitive switch had flipped inside her brain. A switch that told her if she didn't keep swinging, it would all be over. Finally, something that resembled chewed up fat popped out of the man's crushed ear. But even with the alien removed, Kumi continues to rain hell on the man's head. Her eyes popped out, her jaw was unhinged, and hundreds of skull fragments were stabbing his exposed brain. Kumi felt if the axe its head in Kumi felt if she axed his head into dust, that she could get back the childlike innocence, that Jizuru would come back. But they were both long gone now. It was impossible to retrieve any of them back. Kumi will now live with this traumatic experience for the rest of her life. This was not something that could just move on with. Is that it? With the alien now at its shell, it looked pathetic. It looked like stepped on gum, but Sister Kaiko knew what the thing was capable of. She took the shotgun and pointed the barrel straight at it, and then... Momoka. End. Oh my god, is that it? Are you fucking kidding me? That was really good, by the way.
ends on a cliffhanger. I really enjoyed that. Really fucked up. Like, holy shit. Like, that is some of the most fucked up shit I've seen in the game probably ever, now I think about it. Like, it was really, really, really fucked. And I liked it as a result of that. I hope you guys stomached it, because that was really fucking disturbing. Um, we're gonna be playing more little ones like this, little one-shot stories on YouTube. So if you like that kind of thing, consider pledging to our Patreon to allow it to continue to be possible. Also, uh, yeah. Thank you everyone for watching. Uh, leave a like, and I'll try and reply to all the comments on this video. See you soon, no kids. Have a great fucking day.